everybody and welcome to this tutorial. Today I will show you how to circumvent that problem where the router, when the router locks uh, and is unable to receive any requests for pin authentication. Now there are two things, there are two scenarios that can happen here. One of them is that a router locks out for a certain period of time, let's say for five minutes, an hour or a day, or you can ha you have routers which after too many unsuccessful attempts at pin authentication just disable VPS. That can be very problematic. That is probably the worst part of it all because you don't really have any legit any legit ways of resetting the router remotely. There are some tools out there that claim that can do this. I think MDK3 uh, you can use it to effectively reset router lockouts remotely however that only works on really old routers and even I have read I have basically searched through the forums and searched again just to be certain of this it's not very likely to work on any of the newer routers but I mean you can just think of it in a logical fashion if the router somewhere out there locks you out and you are unable to attempt any more pin authentication method any pin pin authentication per a unit of time, uh, you can actually DOS it so nobody else is able to connect to it. And then, more likely than not, the owner of the router or whoever is in control of the router will reset it in order to see if that will fix it. Once the router is reset, pins will the pin lockout will disappear and you will be able to try it again. Uh, I will show you how to DOS routers a bit later on, wireless routers especially, and some other things as well. But for the time being, I have a simpler solution for you. Um, the solution that is generally applied is that you limit Reaver to attempt a certain amount of pins in a certain amount of time. So let's say two pins in 60 seconds, or five pins in 60 seconds, or something like that. You can even tell it uh, just do one after another, but that's bound to fail. Uh, without further ado, let's just go ahead and try it and see will it actually work. But before we do, I have made a small script for myself here to enable monitor mode on my wireless card. Uh, you can have a look at it and copy it if you like, but it's just a list of commands that I have used before. Now let's go less monitor .sh. And this is my script. Basically, uh, it's a bash script, and I have four commands in it. It's I have config VLP 2s0 down to bring my wireless interface down, and then IW config VLP 2s0 to enable the monitor mode on it, bring it back up, and I want it to report back to me and tell me that and confirm that the monitor mode is actually running. So let's just uh, go ahead and do that. Monitor.sh. Excellent. So you see it says here mode monitor. And I know that probably my network manager is going to interfere with this. So I'm just going to do service uh, network manager stop. So that's gone. And go ahead, clear the screen. Now what I need to do is, well, I can either do wash, wash dash i uh, vlp 2 s 0 and see if that will work. No, it will not. Why? Let's just go ahead and see. I have fig. Mm. It's not up for some strange reason. Okay, let's just see if I can do that again. And I'm going to clear the screen. Do wash dash i vlp 2 s 0 press enter, there we go. Uh, probably the interface went down with the network manager for some strange reason, but doesn't really matter now. Anyway, uh, wash i, as I said before, it tells you which interface, which wireless access points in the neighborhood are vulnerable. We have this one, so I'm just gonna cancel it here and close it. You can also check the signal. I've showed you how to do that in the previous tutorial, but let's just go ahead and try to do this in order, and attempt to bypass this uh, limiting uh, limiting rate of VPS pin authentication. So reaver dash i VLP 2s0, which is my wireless interface, space dash b for the BSSID here. 
let's just go ahead and copy it paste it here and what I need next is actually recursive attempts dash R here I can specify the amount of tries so let's say I want to have two tries colon per 60 seconds fairly simple no problems there uh, just by adding this command here you can bypass pretty much the lockout problems but if you get locked out with this try decreasing the amount of tries or increasing the amount of time uh, eventually it has to work because every router out there has a limitation on these things you can't just say uh, I mean they have to basically say if you have that many tries at that amount of time then lock out it's an if statement basically if that act like this if not act like this uh, they have to have a limit here they can't just say if they cannot put infinite values here they have to say basically if you get that many tries in that amount of time lock out and as long as you can be above that the router will not lock out it will work it will work well for you if you're wondering how to get uh, the individual lockout timers for routers well there is no simple answer for this you gotta go on the net and search sometimes you'll find it sometimes you won't it depends people have reversed engineered some of them some of the firmware on the routers and have figured these things out but not on all of them uh, however, the foolproof method is just simply to try a couple of times, see if it works, see when it works, when you do not get it, uh, when you don't get the error message, and you're good to go after that. After that, you can just leave your computer running and it's bound to break it. However, the problem here is that this will increase the amount of time required to crack the pin uh, exponentially. It might take you up to three weeks to break it. I think that was the longest, but still, still, if you just think about it, uh, three weeks is not a huge amount of time it is still within the realm of possible especially if you are trying to pen test something uh, somewhere or if you are uh, or if you have access to a position where you can actually transmit this sort of signal in order to attempt these authentication in order to attempt the authentication via VPS or something of a kind however it is there is a downside to it I mean especially if you don't if you are functioning on a limited timetable and if you don't have that much time it can be it can be very problematic there are some other methods which I'm going to show to you in a moment which can bypass restore previous session uh, no, nah, I, I don't want to restore the previous session. Just uh, let's just go with this one because I have reset my router in order to in order to disable in order to actually unlock it, as I did lock it previously, and that was a problem. So I have while this is running. Let's just. Oops, I didn't specify the channel. You don't actually need to specify the channel, but if you want it to work, if you want to increase the speed of it, you definitely should. So it's channel six. Excellent. Press enter. No, don't rest restore nothing. Just go ahead, associate with it, and attempt these pin combinations. Anyway, you will see that nothing is really happening because I've told it two attempts every 60 seconds, and it's going to take a while before you see anything here. Meanwhile, let's just go over to Kali Linux. I have downloaded a script from the net here. Let's just zoom it in. So this script will work for dealing routers. Now there are various scripts on the net uh, that will help you figure out what the pin is before you even begin before you even begin the pin authentication. Now here's here's the here's the catch. Every router out there needs to have an algorithm with which it can generate these pins since people have reverse engineered these functions which generate pins you can predict what pins which routers will have for example dealing routers generate their pins based upon their MAC addresses which anybody can see so they generate their pins based on the first part of the MAC addresses which is terrible for example this script exact does the reverse reverses the process actually it re duplicates the process you just feed it the MAC address and that's it here let me just show it to you uh, the script you can actually see it on the browser in behind but I'm just gonna nano 
pin gen pi. Excellent. So I have some coloring options here, and let's just zoom it in one more time so you can see it better. So here is the code, and you don't need to understand the code to the fullest of extents. If you wish, you can explore it a bit further. The code is fairly simple. It is written in Python, which is a programming language. All it does is takes the MAC address, splits it in two, uses that to feed the function and then that function based upon the variables that were passed to it can generate the default pin of the router. That can be very helpful especially for dealing routers. The first pin you try you can try the default pin for a specific router because every router out there that has VPS enabled ha also has a default pin which is enabled by default and it is not likely that people will change this. Therefore you are able to do this basically uh, pin gen pi I've just downloaded this from the from the internet here is the here is the website that I have downloaded it from you can just uh, type in VPS algorithm reversed for dealing routers but I, I I'm reluctant to give you a link primarily because it's not very likely that you will be using the specific D-Link router that I am using to demonstrate here. You have, uh, you'll probably have some other router with which you will want to try this, and therefore it is best, it is absolutely best that you, you just use the model of the router that you have or that you wish to pen test and then search the VPS algorithm for that particular router or something of a or something equivalent to that. Not you won't find the VPS algorithm always, but it's worth a shot. Why not? Just type into your favorite search engine VPS algorithm for and then the model number or just the name of the brand of the router like TP Link or Huawei or something of a kind. Doesn't really matter. Anyway, I have pingen.py here, and if I just pass in the uh, if I just pass in the MAC address of any of these, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna stick to I'm gonna um, just in case I'm gonna stick to the one that is that belongs to me. So I wouldn't reveal any information here, not that anybody would be able to make any use of it. I mean, you're too far away anyway. So just paste the MAC address here and feed that MAC address to this script press enter and you will get the default pin. Now obviously this is not the default pin of my router but for because I don't have a D-Link router but for TP-Link route for D-Link routers it's gonna work it's gonna give you default pins and you will be able to authenticate from the first try which is very nice it saves you a ton load of time. These things are very are router specific and you do need to search the net the internet is your best friend to find the VPS algorithm functions that generate it, basically. This is going very slow. I have not passed it the double ver double uh, the VV option. Excellent. So you see you can actually change the values here in the command of the reaver. And even though you've changed the value, even though you've changed the arguments here, it will still tell you what you want to restore from the previous session with the updated arguments. And here we go. I have triggered the AP rate limiting. It says waiting 60 seconds before rechecking. That can be problematic uh, as this doesn't seem to work. I will need to increase this to four or five or something like this, but uh, sorry, not this. We need to decrease this or leave it the same, but increase the amount of time. I have learned that on my particular router, a setting of 300 seconds will do, and if you do, I don't know, two tries per 300 seconds or something of a kind, it's not going to lock out. But I have given a small, a very small value here, and that's why we have faced a lockout here. However, if you play around with these values, you will find that after a while you won't get any lockouts of whatsoever if you set this number, the timer, up, up, up higher a little bit. Anyway, I will continue on this. I will continue with this uh, wireless cracking process in the follow-up tutorial as there are a few more things to cover here. But don't be disencouraged if you fail at first. Uh, if you get these error messages or something like that, just play around with the timers and eventually you will get the hang of it. Eventually you will no longer uh, you will no longer get AP rate limiting or anything of a kind.
Now in the follow-up tutorial what I'm going to do is show you the, the authentication methods and how you can basically shut down all connections to that router in order to force the user to reset the router or something of a kind because there is no way that they can detect you or it's highly unlikely that they will detect you uh, that they will find your physical location that is with uh, while you're performing a DOS attack especially if you change the MAC address if you're doing this sort of thing uh, please remember to always change the MAC address so there's no way that it can be traced back to you in a physical sense but you can't be located anyway you can be you I suppose through some complex methods your physical location could be discovered with a four meter discrepancy so if you're in a bar or something like that if there are five people using a laptop or a pad or something like that there's there's just no way there's too many people to go over and it's I mean, uh, they would have to use directional antennas, and yeah, it would it would basically be a, a manhunt or something of a kind. But you're never you are not going to get that far, primarily because you will always have a permission to do these sort of things. Anyway, I bid you farewell till the next tutorial, where we shall be dealing with the DOS attacks of wireless and the force restart of these routers in order again to avoid this error detected AP rate limiting. Anyway, I bid you farewell and I hope to see you then.